Hey, what's up, guys? In this part of PHP Front to Back, we're going to do something a little interesting that um, you probably won't find on beginner PHP uh, courses. And we're going to work with J uh, JavaScript and Ajax. And the, what we want to do is build a form like this, this search users form. And then as we type, you'll see that it'll update here with some suggestions. It'll, it'll look at the array of names that we're going to create and then it'll match whatever we type in here. So if I put a B, we get Brad. T, we get Tom. If I put an S, there happens to be two names with S, so that's going to show those. And then if there's nothing that it matches, it'll say no suggestion. Okay, so it, that's all happening through Ajax. There's no page refresh or anything like that. So we are going to do, be doing a little JavaScript. Um, if you don't know JavaScript, don't worry about it. It's really not that hard. It's a standard uh, get request and uh, you know you can find plenty of resources on that. Uh, we're actually going to look at one of the W3 schools pages that kind of kind of shows us uh, how to make a get request. All right, so uh, what we're going to do is create a new folder and I'm going to call this let's call this website. What is it? Six. All right, and then we're going to have two files in here. This is going to be index.php. I don't know why that takes a couple seconds to actually create. There we go. All right, and then we're going to create another file called, uh, what are we going to call this? Let's do suggest.php. And this is where we're going to store the uh, users array that this search box will make the request to. It's going to search for that, and then it'll um, send along a response that will have our matches. All right, so we're going to start with the index.php page. I'm going to put some standard HTML tags in here. And then I'm also going to use Bootstrap. So let's put in link rel style sheet. And then href. I'm just going to grab a custom Bootstrap theme from Bootswatch. So I'm going to grab this right here, the first one. We'll click download and then just grab this, um, this link here and put it right in there. All right, so we'll save that. Okay, so now in the body, I'm going to paste in some simple HTML. Okay, so here we have, let me just tab this over. Here we have uh, a container with an H1 and a form. The form has one input, which is a text input, and then suggestions with a, uh, and then the span tag with an ID of output. This is where the, the uh, suggestions will output. All right, so in order for this to work, we need to add an event handler to this input. So we're going to say on key up because we want it basically to make the request every time we type. And we're going to set that to a function called show suggestion. And this is a JavaScript function. We also need to pass it the value of this input and we can get that with this dot value. All right, so now we're going to go up here and put in our script tags and then create a function called show suggestion. Okay, and that's going to take in a string. So just to test it out, I'm going to say console.log string. And then we're going to go to our site, which is uh, let's HTTP localhost slash PHP sandbox slash website six. Okay, so here it is. Now, if I open up the console with F12, we start to type, you'll see it'll log what we type. So we know that that function is getting called. All right, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to check to see if uh, what what's typed in here is at least one character. Okay, so we're going to say if string dot length is equal to zero, then we're going to take this output right here and just set it to nothing. So to do that, we can say document dot get element by ID. We want the element that has the ID of output. And then we want to say dot inner HTML equal to nothing. So we're setting what's in here to nothing. OK, and then we're going to do an else. And then this is where we're going to make our Ajax request. Oops. Okay. 
Uh, now, I'm just going to pull down this w3schools.com. If you guys know how to make an Ajax call from JavaScript, then you're not going to have any issues. Um, but what we need to do is create what's called an XHTTP object so that we can call .open where we can make a GET request to a certain page. In our case, it's going to be suggest.php. Now, before we can do that, we need to, let me just go down here. We need to create that X, XHTTP object. Uh, and then we need to basically check the state. Okay, so we want to call this on ready state change. And before we actually put the, the response into that element, we're going to check to make sure the ready state is four and the status is 200. Okay, so you probably know an HTTP 200 status means everything's okay. So it's just going to check for that. And then the ready state, if we go down to the response here, the ready state basically has um, a status of zero through four. We want to check to make sure that the request finished and the response is ready because we don't want to try to fill that before with the response before we actually get it. All right. So um, I apologize if that's a little tough to understand. Uh, making re requests from something like jQuery is much simpler than using um, default uh, JavaScript. All right. So what we'll do is create a variable here called XML HTTP. We want to set that to new XML HTTP request. Okay, we're setting it to a new object here. And then we want to call that on ready state change. So XML HTTP dot on ready state change. Okay, uh, and then we're going to set that equal to function. And then this is where we want to test for the ready state and also for the status before we make our request and get the response. So we'll say if this dot ready state is equal to four. So basically, if the, we, we've already got the response and the status is equal to 200, then we're ready to go. We're ready to um, put the response into this output right here. OK, so in here we're going to say again, document dot get element by ID. We want the ID of output and then dot inner HTML. And we're going to set that to uh, this, oops, this dot response text. All right. Now we still have to call the open and the get method. So if we go back here, uh, we want to do this right here. All right. And actually, I called it XML. HTTP. So we're going to make sure we change that. You can call this whatever you'd like. OK, so we're making a get request and then we're going to just get rid of this. And we want to make the request to uh, what do we call it? Suggest.php. Uh, and then we also want to send along a query string with this value. OK, so for that, we're going to put a question mark and say Q equals and then uh, I'm just going to concatenate on our string. All right, because every time we type, this is going to run. It's going to make the request and it's going to send the request to this suggest PHP along with whatever we type in. OK, so that's it for the JavaScript. OK, so we can save that and then let's open up suggest.php. And I'm just going to paste this in because it's quite a bit. OK, you can put less names if you want. Um, but it's just a people array. It's an array that's in a, a variable called people and um, just a bunch of names. Now, up here, I put it to do to get from the database because that's something we'll do later on when we get into MySQL. All right. So what we need to do here now is catch that query string. OK, because you can see we're passing in Q equals uh, string, which is whatever we type. So down here, we're going to let's put a comment. We'll say get query string. So take a variable Q and whoop, Q and set that to requests. Now I'm using the request super global here instead of get um, just so that if it, it happens to be a post request, we can get it as well. All right. Then we're going to just basically initialize a variable called suggestion. We're going to set it to a blank string. 
All right, and then down here, we're going to get the suggestions. So we're going to do an if statement, and we're going to say as long as Q is uh, not equal to nothing, then let's say Q equals, and then I just want to make sure it's all lowercase. So we're going to say string to lower. We've learned we learned about that function a couple episodes back, and then we're going to pass in the Q. All right, and then we're going to get the length. We'll say len equals str len, which is another function we learned about earlier, and we'll pass in the Q here. All right, so we're going to get the the actual text that's passed in along with the length. So now what we want to do is we want to loop through our people array. So for that, we're going to use a for each loop. Again, all stuff that we've already learned. And then in here, we'll say for each people as and then I'll call this person. OK, and then in here, we're going to do an if statement. And here we're going to use uh, a function called str istr. So str istr. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And what this does is it'll find the first occurrence of whatever this Q is inside of the person. Now, I'm also going to um, in here put we're going to put our query string and then we're also going to use substring here. And what substring does is it returns part of a string. So we want to pass in here person and then zero and then the length. All right. And then in here we'll do, whoops, we're going to say if suggestion is equal to nothing, okay, so we're testing it up here. If it's equal to nothing, then we're going to say suggestion is then going to be equal to person. Else, then suggestion we're going to append a person okay because if they if it already found someone and then there's another name that matches it we want to add that on to it so this just means we're appending so we're going to append a comma and then that person all right and then the last thing we want to do is output no suggestion if there isn't any so let's go um, down at the bottom here and we'll say echo suggestion equal to nothing we're going to use the ternary, ternary operator here and say no suggestion else than suggestion and that should do it let's save it let's go back to our application and reload and if I type in a B, there we go. And it's, it's looking at this list right here. So let's see. We have Jillian, Jose, which are both J's, and Joanna. And you'll see those all pop up. So it's working as it should. All right. Now, I, like I said, I probably will get back to this later on. And we can make these all these come from a database instead of just a, a static array like this. Okay. So hopefully you guys like this. This was a little tough to try to explain and put into words, but hopefully you got the gist of it. And that's it. Thanks for watching.